test. One, two, three, and we are live here on a Shaggy Duck podcast. Thank you guys. Hey, you shagheads, welcome back to another episode of a Shaggy Duck Live. Curtis Tucker here, aka Shags, for another episode. Sorry, it has been a while. I lead one of those crazy busy lives, trying to find a little bit of time to get in here and do another podcast episode. But thanks again for following my journaling of living in the Great Plains of Enid, Oklahoma, working for myself from home, doing Enid Buzz, Shaggy Duck Studio, all those other crazy things. And I greatly appreciate you guys that have been checking in and listening to the show. Uh, Talked to one of my friends and he had a suggestion, especially for the YouTube channel, because uh, so if you're listening to this on the audio, don't forget that you can go over to uh, youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV and you can watch this episode on YouTube. But he suggested I keep the YouTube videos down to 30 minutes. And since the YouTube videos at this point are basically just a recording of me doing the podcast, uh, I'm going to cut down the podcast to about half an hour. And there was a couple, uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed a couple episodes where uh, maybe I'm trying to squeeze in too much information. So let's try a about a 30 minute uh, time on the podcast. We'll see how that goes. So uh, you guys know that I am attempting to write a book about growing up in Enid, Oklahoma in the 1970s, and there was five of us that lived on a street called West Broadway and, you know, had the greatest time in like the summer of 1977, the summer right before we kind of became the age of high school. So it was kind of our last uh, year to ride banana seat bikes, to, you know, play hide and go seek and, and to do all that goofy kid stuff before we felt like we were getting too old. So. So uh, I've done you know a bunch of episodes on that, but one of the you know one of the inspirations, even though I kind of had this idea of writing the book for a long time, you know, of course there's movies out there, and so and there the 100% reason to write the book is to have it turned into a movie one of these days, and so there were a lot of inspirations that led to that. So tonight. I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about the genre of coming-of-age movies. And so back in the uh, 1990s, so I, I built my first website in 1989 and then built a whole bunch of websites uh, in the 1990s and 2000s. But in the 1990s, there was a lot of keywords and a lot of things that I was able to conquer and because the algorithm and the the results in Google were a lot lot different in the 1990s um, I was able to take certain keywords certain phrases certain subjects and I was able to get my websites or my pages on those things ranked number one so so basically through a lot of the 1990s I had a page on the curtistucker.com which was my kind of my daddy 70s blog that I did way back then uh, but I had one of the blog posts on uh, my top 10 coming of age movies. And so this was again, you know, back back in the 90s. And um, I'm looking at my list there and I must have, uh, let me see what this says, uh, 2009. So I came, came up with the list in 2009. Um, Trying to think, um, went out on my own in about 2003, so that's about right. Probably uh, started blogging, you know, kind of full time, kind of in around in that 2003, 2004. Um, so when I'm trying to think, trying to get my uh, dates down. Anyway, um, getting off. So anyway, so this list was originally published in 2009. And so it was my top 10 uh, coming of age movies and it ranked number one. So if you would go to Google at the time and type in coming of age movies, this page of mine on my website would come up number one. And, and it held that position for years and years until again, like I said, the Google algorithm changed and also 
Google started adding a lot more results. So now if you were to type in coming of age movies, I'm sure Rotten Tomatoes or uh, IMDb, you know, those type of websites are going to come up first after a whole bunch of ads. Well, back in the day when, when I was able to conquer Google, you know, just our websites would pop up, you know, some, it was before they even had the three ads at the top and then they weren't ranking all of these big websites like IMDB, you know, for so many different terms and uh, Rotten Tomatoes. But now it's hard to get a simple small blog website ranked higher than those guys for certain keywords just because that's the way Google works now. So anyway, okay, so, so, my, so I'm going to read off my original list of uh, from 2009 of my top 10 coming of age movies but then over the years uh, that website you know I kind of let it go after the whole uh, panda update on Google uh, but then I brought it back and I added more movies to it and got up to um, where'd they all go uh, got up to 19 now let me see. I think I've even got more. For some reason, my whole my page isn't loading here, but uh, I will get it to load. And and so, th let's see if I can get all of those. Okay, so let's start out with my top 10 original list. And of course, I think for most people, when you're talking coming-of-age movies, everybody thinks about and goes to the 19... 86 movie, Stand By Me, uh, one of the greats as far as a coming-of-age movie. Uh, a lot like what I want to do with my book and my movie. Uh, of course, mine's set in the 70s. Uh, Stand By Me was set, uh, probably, I believe it was set in the 60s. I don't know the exact date, but uh, basically the story of four boys that head off uh, on a journey to find the body of a dead boy and uh, kind of their adventures of you know being out in the wilderness in the wild kind of on their own and um, why aren't I getting this sorry guys uh, having a little trouble with my iPad loading I know I've got a lot more movies down there but uh, so Stand By Me uh, launched the careers of uh, people like uh, Corey Feldman and River Phoenix and so um, it was based on a short story by Stephen King, and I believe Rob Reiner was the director and the narrator, one of my favorite actors of all time, um, Richard Dreyfus. And so, uh, so 1986, okay, and then number two on my list was The Goonies from 1985. Uh, so if you combine those two movies together, well, and then with this, probably with this third one, that's kind of what I want my, but, but my story is going to be based on true stories of what we did as kids, uh, a lot of things that we did in Enid, Oklahoma on West Broadway, but I want it to kind of be like a Stand By Me, Goonies type of uh, book or movie. And so, Goonies, a group of misfits that find a map and set out to find a treasure up in the uh, northwest, uh, up in Oregon, and they do find a pirate ship and they find, you know, they just go on all these. Now, the, the Goonies is a little more goofy, a little, a little more on the goofy side, um, so I'm going to avoid being that that goofy on my story, but um, uh, so a great movie if you have not, surely, hopefully everybody's seen The Goonies. And then another movie that a lot of people may not have heard of from 1995 is called Now and Then, and it's about four girls that grew up, and I believe it's in the 60s as well. And it's kind of about them in their neighborhood, and they ride banana seat bikes, and they're trying to solve a mystery as well. And they're all about the same age as the kids in Stand By Me and Goonies. So if you combine all three of those movies, that's kind of, you're probably going to start to kind of get an idea of what my idea, my movie is going to be like again. But it's going to be based on true stories and true things that we did in Enid, Oklahoma. So number four on my list uh, from 1986, Pretty in Pink. It's a kind of more of a teenage love story, but uh, it does have, you know, kids in, in that tween 
tween age, uh, coming of age, and it is a, um, I'm going to forget his name, uh, it's kind of, there was kind of that whole genre of those type of movies, the heartbreak and the teenage in the 80s, and um, I will think of his name in a second. Uh, number five on my list, Dead Poet Society from 1989. Uh, it was a great movie. It was set in 1959. You know, the one thing that I, I kind of notice is some of the better coming-of-age movies, you know, they have uh, the, the, the characters in the movies are, you know, young, you know, either like really young, like maybe 11, 12, 13, all the way up to maybe just starting college age. But a, most of them are set back in the past. Uh, so uh, this one set in 1959. It had Robin Williams, uh, a whole huge list of uh, actors. You need to, if you have not seen it, you need to check it out. It out. It's about. Um, uh, Robin Williams being a teacher at this uh, all-boys academy and uh, just teaching the boys life lessons, uh, teaching things that are not out of the textbook, and just making them think for themselves. And so it's a really great uh, coming-of-age movie. Number six, it's kind of it was in that whole 80s genre, is St. Elmo's Fire. Now those kids in St. Elmo's Fire um, college, getting out of college age, a little bit older, but uh, same deal, a group of friends struggling with uh, adulthood. So it's kind of on the cusp of being a coming-of-age movie, um, maybe not as much as the other ones, but I kind of stuck it in, in that whole genre. Number seven, uh, October Sky from 1999. And I believe that one had uh, the gentleman that I worked with, Jake Gyllenhaal, in that one. It's uh, set in 1950s, a boy from a small town overcomes uh, all of his challenges and wants to become a scientist. And so he sets off rockets and it's all about uh, him kind of finding himself. So another one of my favorites. Uh, number eight is Breakfast Club from 1985. Again, it's in that whole Pretty in Pink. Uh, a lot of those actors were, you know, in a lot of these uh, these 80s movies. It uh, that's it's a great one. Surely most people have seen it. It's the one. Now it's not again. And then like uh, Saint Elmo's Fire. Not so much a coming-of-age movie. It is a little bit, but it's more of these teenagers discovering who they are, discovering things about themselves. Uh, the five high school students get stuck in detention on a Saturday. The whole movie takes place in one day, and uh, basically they find out they have more in common than they have apart. You know, one's a thug, and one's the you know pretty girl, and then there's the athlete, and the nerd, and the... Uh, you know, the weirdo, and so they all kind of get stuck, and they kind of all figure out that they're all really actually, they all kind of have problems, but, uh, so it's kind of a coming-of-age movie. Uh, number nine, My Girl from 1991. Uh, I believe it has um, Dan Aykroyd and Jamie Lee Curtis, and then uh, a young girl who's kind of about to reach her teens, trying to find herself, going through, you know, being a kid and has a best friend that's a boy and uh, kind of their adventures throughout the movie. So it's uh, it's kind of a cool movie. And then number, and again, this is my first top 10 list that I did this in, uh, what did I say, 2009. And so American Graffiti and that one, uh, gosh, you know, Ron Howard and Richard Dreyfuss and Harrison Ford and tons and tons. Again, that one, the kids are a little bit older, but it is a coming of age. You know, they're, they're figuring out what, what comes after high school, what comes after being a, a kid. It's kind of a, again, almost one of those where it uh, all takes place on one night while they're cruising the strip and the different adventures that happen to them. And then at the end of the movie, you know, they kind of tell... Uh, kind of where everybody went off to. And then there ended up being a American Graffiti too. But, um, so I put that one in there. So not all of those are, you know, specific coming of age, but they, they kind of fit into that mold of coming of age movies. And so 
Um, so again, with that list being number one in Google, when you typed in coming of age movies, uh, I would get a lot of comments and a lot of emails and things. And so uh, as time went on, I decided, uh, you know, I needed to expand that list. And so I added another 10. And so these are basically just to kind of give you guys, if you kind of like that genre and you haven't seen all these movies, uh, hopefully I'm going to give you a movie that maybe you haven't seen before and uh, maybe you'll like. And so here's my second 10. And we start off with 16 Candles from 1984. Again, uh, John Hughes was the, uh, the guy that wrote those and directed those. And so he did, you know, Pretty in Pink and 16 Candles. And so, uh, again, a lot of the same actors, 16-year-old, uh, she turns 16, her family forgets her birthday, but she has a crush on the stud of the high school, and it kind of goes through her misadventures of trying to get a date with him, and then the geeky boy having a crush on her, and, uh, you know, again, by the end, she kind of has kind of a coming-of-age moment. Uh, so that's why I put that one in there. Number 12, The Sandlot uh, from 1993. A uh, really great movie. A bunch of scrappy kids out playing baseball uh, in the, you know, backyard diamond that they had in the neighborhood. And uh, the ball gets hit over a fence and there's a big dog. And so they've got to try to figure out how to get the baseball. It's set in the 1960s. Uh, but, you know, kind of by the... So what the one of... The, the kind of the star of the movie is a kid that really doesn't isn't athletic doesn't know how to play baseball and by the end of the movie he he's better and he becomes friends and and he kind of comes into his own so it's kind of a kind of a coming of age movie number 13 from 1983 the outsiders uh that was filmed here in oklahoma over in tulsa the author is from tulsa and so uh, it's basically a movie of, uh, you know, your, your greasers and your socias and kind of the battling of the rich and the underprivileged. And, uh, gal, that movie. If you have not seen The Outsiders, uh, if you're young, uh, you know, Tom Cruise, Emilio Estevez, uh, Patrick Swayze, I mean, just every... Leaf Garrett, everybody in that movie, I think, became famous. And so, uh, I mean, literally everybody. So that is definitely, and a lot of them, this was before they became, you know, very good actors. And so they look a little different. They're um, Ralph Macchio. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many uh, great actors in that movie. But uh, And if you haven't seen it in a while... Uh, you need to check it out. And they've opened up an Outsiders Museum. Basically, the house that the boys hung out at is now a museum over in Tulsa, and you can go check that out. Uh, number 14, it came out in 2000. It's called Almost Famous. A uh, high school boy uh, wants to be a writer. He uh, ends up going on the road with a band called Stillwater. It's set in the 1970s. And he travels around with them, writing, and then um, gets uh, Rolling Stone magazine. It's going to let him do a little piece, and then as the movie goes on, he gets a you know he gets the cover story. But it's a great coming of age movie of this kid learning about life and and all that. It's got some great actors in it as well. Number fifteen, Dirty Dancing from 1987, set in 1963. Uh, country club setting, a uh, rich young girl falls for one of the dance instructors, Patrick Swayze, and uh, Jennifer Grace, the girl, and it's kind of her coming of age. Uh, you know, it's kind of more of a romance love story. Uh, nine, or Number 16 from 1979, Breaking Away, a bunch of working class teens obsessed with cycling, uh, they kind of trying to find out, you know, where they're going to go in life and uh, the fantasy of being these great bike racers. And so uh, it's a really, really cool movie. And I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, it's got some famous, some guys that became famous later on. I, uh, at this second, I don't have it right in front of me who they are. But uh, number 17 from 1992, it's called School Ties, set in the 1950s. Uh, about a star quarterback at an elite preparatory school. 
which is Brendan Fraser. Uh, he has to conceal that he's Jewish, and so, but when they do find out that he's Jewish, um, you know, there's that conflict, and and there's the you know a bunch of the boys in the school. They're kind of coming of age and finding out about themselves and. Uh, so it's kind of, it's a, it's a really cool movie. Um, number 18, Summer of 42, which was filmed in 1971. Teenage boy has an interlude with an older woman, woman during a summer trip. And so uh, that's definitely a coming-of-age movie. Um, Dustin Hoffman plays in that one as a very young actor. You guys check that one out. Number 19, That's What I Am from 2011. It's set in 1965. A 13-year-old paperboy is paired up with a geek on a project, and it's basically the girl uh, next door that he's kind of had a crush on, and it's kind of about them finding themselves and uh, kind of a uh, great coming-of-age movie. Number 20 uh, from 1991, The Man in the Moon, also set in the 1950s, a 14-year-old girl gets her first difficult lesson in love. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not re I'm, I know I've seen it once or twice, but I'm not remembering all of the actors or the whole storyline of that one, but uh, that's number 20 on my list of coming of age movies. And then, uh, then again, I think my website kind of faded or I might have let it go and then I, I posted it again and I thought, you know what, Year, several years had gone by and I'd seen a lot more movies had come out and then I'd gone back and seen some older movies and so I added another six and so this will be the last six. And so, so these are going to be uh, the top 26 coming of age movies according to moi, according to Shags. Number 21. I think I debated on putting this one on uh, 2004, 13 going on 30, because most of the movie is about um, Jennifer Garner at 30. And so, but, you know, the beginning of the movie, she's a kid, and at the end of the movie, she's a kid, and it's kind of about her coming of age, you know, but coming of age she learns stuff as an adult but looking back so anyway uh really fun good movie it's a rom-com um so check that one out number 22 my dog skip from 2000 uh it's a shy boy and he ends up getting a dog uh, in a sleepy southern town and it's just kind of the adventures of him his coming of age finding himself uh, number 23 from 1996 white squall uh, a great movie uh, it has, I can picture him, um, Bridges, Bridges, Jeff, Jeff Bridges. Uh, but it's set in 1960. A group of, uh, seems like uh, several of these have uh, preparatory schools in them, but uh, set in 1960, a group of uh, preparatory schoolboys, they board an old fashioned sailing ship. Jeff Bridges kind of teach them life lessons uh, being on the ship, and they get hit by a white squall. and uh, then there's, you know, they, he gets, they try to, you know, kind of court martial. Anyway, it's kind of a, it's almost kind of like a dead poet society, but on a ship. And so check that one out. Uh, number 24, uh, from 2003, Secondhand Lions. Not, uh, it's not about a group of kids. It's actually about a, two old guys, but they take in their, uh, I think, nephew, uh, and, uh, Haley Joe Osmond, I believe. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to say that. I think that's the boy. Um, shy boy. Uh, they they talk about their adventures, and he kind of he kind of lives his you know thrill through their stories, and they eventually uh, get a lion, and he start he doesn't want him to shoot the they get a lion to shoot, and he becomes friends with the lion, but. Uh, more of a story about him coming of age uh, through their stories and his mom kind of abandoning him. But uh, I just, it's maybe not at the top for being a coming of age movie, which it kind of is, but one of the best movies out of the whole list. Uh, secondhand Lines, you could, pr I, I can watch it over and over and over. I've probably seen it 20 times. 
Uh, just one of those movies that every time it comes on, you can definitely watch it again. Uh, number 25 from 2010 called Flipped. Uh, it is another Rob Reiner film. It's about two eighth graders that have feelings for each other. I think they live next door to each other. And uh, it's just kind of uh, about them coming of age and dealing with that whole angst uh, in, in your teenage years. Uh, and then the last one on the list uh, from 2011, number 26 is Super 8. Uh, really loved Super 8. I wanted it to be more, I wanted it to be less space alien. I think had they done anything, you know, had they taken out the alien, I think it would have been one of my favorite movies. Uh, set in 1979, a boy and his friends are, uh, you know, doing a film like, you know, like we did. I mean, back in, in the 70s, you know, our buddy had an 8 millimeter camera. We had 8 millimeter cameras that our parents had, and we, we would film, you know, goofy things and movies. Not, not like try to do a real movie, but um, so Super 8 is really cool, uh, except, uh, you know, it's got that definite alien in the movie, which is a big part of the movie, uh, which, you know, it, it's it's cool. So it's kind of a coming of age, you know. The boy, the star in the in the movie, loses his mom, and and then he's kind of got to grow up, and he has conflicts with his dad, and and things like that. So uh, so a pretty good movie. So right there is my list of my top twenty six coming of age or kind of coming of age movies. Uh, so you guys let me know. Hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com. Send me an email. Somebody send me an email from this episode. Tell me what your favorite coming-of-age movie is. Tell me which coming-of-age movies I left out of my list that you guys think probably should have been on there. And uh, just tell me hello. Um, you know, another one of my favorite movies is Lost Boys. Um, I don't know that there's really much about Lost Boys that is coming of age, but uh, you know, it's kind of when I tell people my book and my story, Banana Seat Squad, it, I want it to kind of be a combination of Stand By Me, Goonies, and Lost Boys. And that the Lost Boys part is I don't want to go as far and have an alien, but I want there to be, you know, something, you know, something that kind of draws you in and, and makes it kind of cool. So, so be looking for that. Uh, I am sketching down ideas all the time. Hopefully I can get that. Once I get the whole plot line figured out, I can get that written pretty quick and I'll, I'll get that out. You guys are probably tired of hearing me talk about that. So anyway, again, I appreciate you guys checking in on A Shaggy Duck Life. Don't forget, I'm probably going to shorten the episodes for a while anyway, see how that works out. You guys, I would love to hear from you guys. You guys have a blog, a podcast, or anything like that. I want to hear from you guys, because you guys are hearing from me, but I want to know what you guys are up to. I want to form kind of a community. We have a, a super, really cool community on the 70s Buzz podcast, and I get to hear what everybody else is doing, and you know, what they're up to, and so I, I would, I, and I know hopefully a couple of you guys from the 70s Buzz uh, listen to this one, so go ahead and chime in on this one too, uh, shags at shaggyduck.com. You can go to youtube.com uh, slash Curtis Tucker TV and watch the uh, video of this, but uh, just uh, send me some messages, let me know uh, if you guys like coming of May age movies, and all of that stuff, and so I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to update you guys on before I get out of here. I got my girls off to college. Uh, the oldest is back at OU, getting ready for college to start. She's uh, in Palm Camp. The youngest is back at Arkansas, same thing, doing Palm Camp, getting ready for football to start. So as soon as the football season starts, I'll be doing that, uh, traveling to at least uh, probably Fayetteville or Norman every other weekend, so watching lots of football, so I'll try to keep you guys updated on that. Um, I think that's about all. Uh, I still, I need to do quite a bit of studying before I go take my drone license, my drone pilot's license, so I've, I've got that. I've got my surfboard right here, which I'm hoping to get to, to paint on, and uh, Gosh, I think that's about it. You guys can hear me on the 70s Buzz podcast with Todd Wheeler. Uh, that comes out on Wednesday mornings. And we also do Buzzhead Radio 
which is a podcast, which is just, just a little more about all kinds of whatever's going on in the world. And then I've got this one. So again, thank you guys so much for checking in. I appreciate you. And uh, I will talk to you guys next week.